In the land of Skyrim, betrayal and deceit are all too common. The Stormcloaks believe the Empire had betrayed them and the Ninth Divine Talos. Yet the Empire believes Ulfric Stormcloak murdered the High King and betrayed all of the Empire. And businessmen like Eriker and Maven trick and deceive people in order to acquire profits. By Mafala, even in the creation of the world, elves believe the god Lorcan tricked and deceived the Etada into bringing about creation and upsetting the status quo. Speaking of Mafala and betrayal, Mafala is the Daedric prince that is associated with murder, lies, deception, and uh, more physical activities if you know what I'm saying. In the events of Skyrim, the player is tasked by Mafala, who is known as the Whispering Lady, into acquiring the Ebony Blade, one of her infamous Daedric artifacts from the depths of Dragon's Reach, and will then task the player with increasing the blade's power by simply slaughtering ten people who are your friends that trust you. Now, maybe you don't want to increase the Ebony Blade's power because you're playing a good character who won't murder their friends. Or maybe you're just role-playing a little bitch. But, if you do want to associate with the inner workings of treachery for sport or to harness the leeching power of Mafala's Blade, then this video is for you. Hello, my fellow hirelings of House Telvani! I'm Neloth, and today I'm going to be talking about my recommendations for people you should kill with the Ebony Blade if you want to truly unlock its full potential. Before I begin, I do want to state that there are a few glitches or techniques that you can use in order to bypass killing actual NPCs, like raising the corpse of a friend to kill them again with the Ebony Blade so the game thinks you killed two people instead of one. Or how you can travel to the Dwemer Ruin of Kagrumez and acquiring the friendly Dwarven Spider and Dwarven Sphere and slaying them with the Ebony Blade only for them to respawn 24 hours later so you can do it all over again. And feel free to use those glitches, however I want to ask the hard questions and debate on the morality on who you should kill if you had to, to upgrade the Ebony Blade, and less so on the glitches. With all that being said, let us slice our way into this very video. Hurt. Hurt is a Nordic lumberjack who runs Half Moon Mill with her husband, Hearn. She can easily be befriended by chopping some firewood and selling it to her. Now, Hurt does seem to be very nice and hospitable, stating that she loves visitors. However, if we take a close look deep into her big, beautiful, glowing red eyes, we can come to the blood-curdling realization that she is a vampire alongside her husband, Hearn. On top of the fact that she is a blood-sucking creature of the night, if we walk outside her house and into her shed across her mill, we can find it being very bloody with an assortment of meats. And a human skull. This more or less confirms that Hurt and Hearn will kill, carve up, and eat any visitors that come their way, which is why they just so love visitors. Killing Hurt would definitely make Skyrim a less violent place. Oh, and according to the wiki, Hearn is also someone that can fuel the Ebony Blade, likely after assisting his blood-sucking wife, so feel free to kill him as well. He also has a Dark Brotherhood contract on him, so if you desire to join a group of edgy, gimp-suit-wearing psychopaths, you have no reason not to kill him with the Ebony Blade. Lemkiel. Lemkiel is a Nordic farmer that makes his home in Rorikstead and is the father of two twin girls, Sissel and Britta. He can easily be befriended by picking crops and giving them to him. However, he is an abusive bastard that treats his daughters with contempt, calls them good for nothing, and beats them. 
Not only is he an asshole to his own daughters, but he is also extremely rude to anyone who speaks to him, especially about how he treats his own daughters. Now, the reason Lemkeel despises his daughters so much is because his wife died giving birth to them, which has led to his disdain and horrible attitude. But this is no excuse for becoming a worse parent than a slowed. His own daughters might go on to lead better lives if he wasn't around. Oh, and Lemkeel's name rearranged literally spells kill me. So not only am I saying you should kill him, but the almighty godhead that is Bethesda is as well. The only downside to killing Lemkeel is that Sissel, his daughter, will be sent to Honor Hall Orphanage and won't be able to learn magic from Joanne Manette. Thonar Silverblood. Thonar Silverblood is a Nord that is the head of the Silverblood family alongside his brother Thongvor. Thongvor handles the political side of the family, while Thonar handles the business side. And let me just say that Thonar Silverblood's business practices will make you look at Boeing like they're a charity organization. See, Thonar Silverblood runs Sidna Mine, a silver mine, but instead of employing miners, they use prisoners, mostly forsworn as indentured servants, basically just slave labor. On top of this, Thonar coerces a captured Forsworn king named Madanak into using his Forsworn agents to assassinate any competition or threats that come his way, like sending Waylon to murder Margaret, who is secretly an Imperial agent when we first enter Markarth. And if that wasn't bad enough, Thonar will send out mercenaries to harass and bully mine owners like Inathatch and Karthwaston into selling their land whether they want to or not. When uncovering this Forsworn conspiracy between Thonar and Madanok, Thonar will murder a man named Eltries using the Markarth Guard and pin the murder on you, sentencing you to hard labor at Sidna Mine indefinitely. Thonar already owns half the Reach, but he won't be content until he owns all of it. He is also an arrogant bastard that says the people of Markarth should call him a king instead of the Jarl. If you wish to kill Thonar with the Ebony Blade, make sure to assassinate Madanok while in prison and then escape, as Thonar will reward you, pardon you, and become your friend. You should definitely repay the favor by cutting his head off. Andolimar. Andolimar is an Altmer and Thalmor Justiciar that lives in the Understone Keep in Markarth. Now, already, Andolimar should be killed on the spot for being a Thalmor agent alone, since the Thalmor are a faction of elves that rule the Old Mary Dominion, brought the Empire to its knees, forbade the worship of Talos, and many other things. But, Andolimar also embodies every single aspect of the Thalmor, especially their ideals for elven supremacy as Andolimar is an arrogant bastard and believes he is a superior bred myrrh that is better than everyone else in Markarth. The only problem with killing Andolimar using the Ebony Blade is that the only way to befriend him is to snitch on Ogmund, a Nordic Skald, to Andolimar by telling him that Ogmund secretly worships Talos. Andolimar will then arrest and imprison Ogmund indefinitely, and will still supposedly be imprisoned if the Stormcloaks take over Markarth, but that is likely just an oversight in-game. However, with or without the Ebony Blade, you should probably kill Andolimar. Melka. Melka is a seemingly friendly hag raven who is locked up in a cage inside Blind Cliff Bastion in the Reach. She is locked in a cage because another hag raven named Petra forcefully took over her tower, which interestingly indicates that many hag ravens likely have rivalries with each other. 
Anyways, we can assist Melka in freeing her and retaking her tower by slaying Petra. And afterwards, Melka will give us a staff and become our friend. However, Melka is a disgusting, abominable hag raven who will likely continue to kill innocent people in her weird experiments. And not the cruel Telvanni experiments either. I mean, she states how much she loves collecting and boiling eyeballs, and she also refers to the player as meat and morsel, which might indicate that she eats human flesh as well. Just kill her with the blade, nobody will miss her anyways. Hrogar. Hrogar is a Nordic lumberjack that lives in Morthal and can easily be befriended by giving him some firewood. However, there are a lot of rumors circulating about Hrogar and his relationship with a woman named Alva. You see, Hrogar's wife and daughter were sadly killed in a house fire, and before the ashes were even cold, Hrogar pledged himself to Alva, which made many people believe Hrogar set the fire out of lust. This is partly true. You see, Hrogar was under Alva's influence because Alva, similar to Hurt and Hearn, is secretly a vampire who is conspiring with another vampire named Movarth to take over the town of Morthal. Now, Hrogar didn't actually set the fire himself, as Alva gave that task to a woman named Laelette. However, it turned into a disaster. Now, if you attempt to break into Alva's house to uncover evidence, Hrogar will be inside serving as a guard, and will attack you if he spots you, which may result in you having to kill him. But why let his death go to waste when you can use his blood to fuel the katana-like ebony blade? Now, if you break in and out of Alva's house without Hrogar spotting you, and afterwards kill Alva and Movarth, Hrogar will instead thank you for breaking the spell placed on him, and will admit that he feels terrible about what he has done. Now, this may be dark as fuck, but even if you do free him, it could be seen as a mercy killing to still kill him with the ebony blade in order to free him from his guilt and be reunited with his wife and daughter in Aetherius? But I'm just gonna back away from that and leave that dark decision up to you. Sinding. Sinding is a Nord werewolf who can originally be found in the Falkreath jail. He was imprisoned for killing a little girl named Lavinia who wasn't even 10 years old yet. Now, the reason Sinding murdered Lavinia is because Hircine, the Daedric Prince of the Hunt, threw a curse on a ring that Sinding stole from him, which causes him to transform into a werewolf at the worst of times. Now, it can be debated on if the real monster is Sinding or Hircine, however, I would argue that Sinding is a danger to himself and everyone around him. Now, in your second encounter with Sending, he will state that he will no longer live among people. However, we don't know if he'll ever be true to his word, and who knows how many poor hunters and alchemists he will tear apart that venture too deep into the woods. I feel that Sending has a lot of blood on his hands, and you might as well take the opportunity to skin his hide with the ebony blade and acquire another Daedric artifact called Savior's Hide. Silas Vesuius. Silas Vesuius is an Imperial that lives in Dawnstar and is the curator of his own personal museum called the Museum of the Mythic Dawn. Here he puts artifacts and objects relating to the mythic dawn on display and wishes to further add to his collection by retrieving all of the broken pieces of Mehrun's razor and reforging it. See, Silas is a descendant from the infamous cult called the Mythic Dawn, who worshipped Mehrun's Dagon and brought about the cataclysmic Oblivion Crisis, which nearly destroyed the world. Silas has a weird sense of pride in his lineage and wants to make sure that the world will never forget about the mythic dawn. 
Now, Silas isn't necessarily a bad person, however, at one point you will be given a decision between killing Silas and acquiring Maroon's Razor, or sparing Silas and getting a measly leveled amount of gold. I personally think that killing Silas and getting the Razor is worth it. And if you think so as well, just, uh, you know, cut him down with the Ebony Blade for a Daedric Prince to see, and get two rewards for the bargain of one soul. The Markarth Cannibals In the Reach, there is a secret cult of cannibals dedicated to the Daedric Prince Namira, also known as the Lady of Decay. These cannibals include Eola, Lisbeth, Banning, and a few others, however you can only befriend these three cannibals. Eola can only be befriended after killing and eating a priest of Arche, however Lisbeth and Banning can be befriended before having to perform such a dreadful act by aiding them in their minor quests. Now, if being cannibals and holding association with a disgusting Daedric Prince isn't enough reason to kill them with the Ebony Blade, just know that Eola attempts to manipulate and use you for her own ends, Banning feeds his dogs with human flesh, and Lisbeth ate both her husband and brother, likely killing them beforehand. Jari Ra and Deja Jari, Ra, and Deja are two Argonian siblings that hang around solitude. It is discovered through a quest with Jari, Ra that they are both representatives of a notorious band of pirates called the Black Blood Marauders. Jari, Ra will ask that you put out the light at the Solitude Lighthouse, which will make a ship called the Ice Runner run aground. Jari, Ra will then tell you to go to the wrecked ship and talk to Deja to collect your share of the loot. However, Deja will reward you with betrayal and deceit, Mafala's favorite combination and attempt to kill you. After disposing of her, you will find out that Jari Ra is held up in a cave called Broken Ore Grotto and will be directed to kill him as well. The deaths of both Jari Ra and Deja apparently satisfy the blade, likely because they betrayed you, but why cry about being betrayed when you can absorb their tears? Whoa, okay, I think I'm getting way too into this betrayal and deceit stuff. The Dark Brotherhood If you are an individual who's either a completionist, an edgelord, or an admirer of gimp suits and dead old women, then you might end up joining the Dark Brotherhood. If so, this presents many opportunities for feeding the Ebony Blade, as some of the contracts will involve killing people who can be befriended beforehand. These individuals include... Narfi a beggar who we can assist in getting closure on his sister. Baytild, a mine boss we can sell iron ore to. Hearn, the vampire who is married to Hurt that I have already mentioned. Nilsine Shattershield, who a woman named Muiri once dead. She can be befriended after uncovering the serial killer in Windhelm, the same serial killer that killed Nilsine's sister. Although, keep in mind that killing Nilsine is optional, so you can avoid this one. And Amand Motier, a Breton noble, likely on the Elder Council, that contracted the Dark Brotherhood to kill the Emperor, Titus Mead II. Before killing the Emperor, he will ask that you punish Amand Motier after striking him down, and we can take him up on his offer. This will total up to an easy five betrayals to feed the Ebony Blade. However, if you dislike the Brotherhood, want to play a morally good character, or want to push your Morag Tong roleplaying build to the absolute max, you can also kill each member of the Dark Brotherhood yourself with the Ebony Blade, which will satisfy both Mafala and the Blade. This will include Astrid, Arnbjorn, Festus Krex, Gabriella, Nazir, and Vizara. That's a whopping six souls right there to feed the blade. Instead of serving Sithis in the void, they serve you by making Mafala smile. Boethia's Calling 
there is also a quest called Boethia's Calling, where Boethia, the Daedric Prince of Plots, asks you to do something similar to what Mafala wants, but on a smaller scale. Ask a follower to follow you to Boethia's shrine and sacrifice them for only Boethia to see. But instead of using a sacrificial blade, you can use your own sacrificial blade called the Ebony Blade. Now, if you haven't watched my video on who you should sacrifice to Boethia, I would highly recommend it, as there are a few options of who to sacrifice similar to this video, but I would argue less messed up. Now, when we have completed our killing spree, Mafala will be very pleased and tell us to go forth and oppose the orders of trust and intimacy. Now, while we can't see the specific enchantment on the Ebony Blade in our inventory, the actual Absorb Health enchantment on the blade will increase from 10 points of health to 30 points of health. This may not seem worth it at first, but it should be noted that the Ebony Blade does not ever lose its charge unlike some other weapons. So if you keep swinging this blade at an enemy, you effectively become invincible in that moment with how much health you're just going to absorb. Sadly, you cannot temper the blade to do more damage, but if you aren't planning on playing through everything Skyrim has to offer, or you don't plan on playing on Master or Legendary difficulty, you should be fine. If not, then just keep it as a trophy and know that you have earned the approval and admiration of yet another Daedric Prince, and one that is held in high regards by the Dunmer people to boot. And that's all I wrote! A video where I give you plenty of options on who to kill with the Ebony Blade in order to increase its power and please Mafala. Be sure to tell me down below who you think are the best candidates to slaughter with the Ebony Blade to increase its power. So with all that being said, make sure to like the like button, like the subscribe button, and like the bell notification down below to be updated on future videos. And I will see you whenever the fuck I decide to upload again. House Telvani be with you. Please, O oh hero of Skyrim, I shall be ever so grateful.